Okay, just wanted to show you guys what these things look like in darkness where you can actually see the flame. Okay. All right. That's what they look like at night. Now. Okay, comparison between the twos, if I had to make a comparison with firearms. Okay. I would do this. This is what I would say, the comparison between the tubes. This one here, this is the propane one. And what I noticed with the propane is, the propane beat the liquid fuel one hands down, just kicked its ass, okay? Now, <clears throat> what's neat about this is it's got the electric start on it. Of course, if you were to take it wherever you go, make sure you take matches with you or lighters just in case the electric start fails. Okay, but get this crap out of the way. But <clears throat> um, I would compare it to uh, a semi automatic handgun. Works great, okay, but just like a semi automatic handgun, you're going to have to have a magazine to go with it. The magazine being the propane canisters. You're gonna have to have propane canisters or else this ain't gonna work, obviously, okay? You lose your magazine, you know, you basically got a one-shot firearm at best, if not worthless, okay? <clears throat> the Coleman exponent, um, I would compare to a revolver, all right? You don't need a magazine, it's all self-contained. It's got its fuel storage 
contain with it within it. However, <clears throat> uh, with this, what I've noticed is you've got to pump it up. You know, 50 pumps, something like that. Once you start using it, <clears throat> the pressure quickly diminishes. And what that means is you're right in the middle of heating something up. And what you have to do then is you have to stop uh, heating whatever you're heating, take it off, be real careful because this thing right here is going to be, excuse me, is going to be red hot, okay? And the pump is located here right below it. So when you go to pump this thing, your fingers are extremely close to this red hot <clears throat> uh, ring here, which, you know, you got to be careful you don't get burned. Um, so that's probably about the greatest downfall of this thing. Um, this took probably at least triple, if not quadruple, the amount of time to heat the... Um, the pot of water there than the propane did. Okay, plus you got the inconvenience <clears throat> of uh, having to stop what you're doing and to have you know having to keep using this pump to bring back the pressure to keep the, the flames going. So I just wanted to let you know that if you're considering either one, you know, it depends you know what your philosophy is. You know, this here is the semi-automatic, just high capacity, just blazes away. This is the revolver, low capacity, but it's got the uh, self-contained um, fuel component to it. So just thought I'd pass that on to you just in case you're interested in buying one. Um, also, um, <clears throat> if I could digress for just a second like I normally do, when it comes to semi-automatic handguns, just thought I'd let you know about this. A couple of things. Um, some folks like to do this when the uh, slides lock back to the rear, they like to do this, you know, this uh, slide release, right? Which can be a bitch sometimes, okay? Um, and it can vary from handgun to handgun. So what I'd recommend that you do for all you guys that are not into, of course, the phone's going to ring. Who else would it be? Um, so anyway, like I was saying, uh, what I would recommend is that uh, you do not use this. Okay, you don't use the slide release. Just go ahead and use that horseshoe shape. Cup it over, slide, and rack and let it rip. Don't ride the slide forward with your hand. Just pull it back and let it rip. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, oh, wrong side. And uh, one other thing I thought I'd throw in is when it comes to your uh, rucksacks, make sure you get a waterproof bag. Put all your stuff inside your waterproof bag. The rucksack by itself Probably will not be uh, waterproof, water resistant. Uh, you can maybe increase that resistance, you know, by getting some spray that repels water. But regardless, make sure that you get uh, a waterproof bag to put all your stuff in, um, especially clothing, of course. Um, another thing I thought I'd pass on when uh, it comes to firearms. This here, when I originally bought it, uh, it was a compensated barrel. And what that means, for those who don't know, is the barrel comes with holes cut in it. Okay? Um, 
And what that does is it vents all the hot gases come flying out of the hole. Um, basically, another analogy would be dragon's breath. Okay, just lots of flame if it's slow burning powders. Uh, lots of hot gases come pouring out of this thing. Now, uh, the reason for uh, the compensation on the barrel is supposedly to reduce recoil, you know, supposedly to help uh, increase your accuracy. That may be great um, if you're doing target shooting on the range in broad daylight. Okay, now if you're using your firearm, for defensive reasons, okay? You don't want that. You don't want dragon's breath blowing out of both ports in low light conditions, okay? You just don't want that. <clears throat> um, if you have that uh, firing out of the ports of the barrel, um, it's startling uh, to say the least. It startles you, it kind of throws you off for just a second. <clears throat> Another thing is if you were to draw and fire from the hip, what that dragon's breath does is it vents up. Okay, so if you're firing from the hip, <clears throat> all that flame and hot gas is going to come straight up towards you and basically give you an uppercut right underneath your chin. You definitely don't want that. So just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, I'm not a proponent of compensated barrels. Anyway guys, I uh, think that's it for now, just thought I'd pass that along, and as always, thanks for watching.